Hello, today I will be talking about what is the biggest threat to you finding a job and what is also one of the biggest threat to the economy that is crippling this country of ours. Aaron Matsuleri, our beloved, beloved Minister of Home Affairs, is at it again. Home Affairs is a crucial part of our lives. When you are born, when you die, get divorced, when you retire, when you want to leave the country, when you want to come into the country, when you want to open a business in South Africa, home affairs affects every part of your life. With it, everything to do with your identity as a South African or a non-South African. So home affairs is obviously the first point of entry when you want to come to live, work or holiday in South Africa. But instead of making it work, instead of, of streamlining it and making it easier for you and me to deal with the department, this is what our beloved minister, Minister Motswa Lady, is planning to do. Right now in the news, it is about a radical overall of refugee law to correct mistake after 1994. Minister Motswa Lady is now in the process. <coughs> Excuse me. He is now in the process of wanting to update and upgrade the laws, the existing laws of home affairs. The, not sorry, not home affairs, the immigration laws to make it more difficult for you to become a citizen of South Africa, to protect the sovereignty of South Africa. That is what he is saying. But why is this doubtful? And why am I making this video? Because there are more other pressing things that needs his attention. Before you want to change a law, before you want to fix what right now is not a burning issue, before you do that, you need to upgrade your systems. You need to fix what is not working. There's a huge debate and almost every show I make about that concerns South Africa. You, I talk about xenophobia, illegal immigration, and home affairs is slap bang in the middle of that. Currently, there's a problem of illegal immigrants in South Africa. They are those who are struggling to get a visa. They want to do the right thing. But because of the backlogs at home affairs, even if you want to do the right thing, it is so difficult. I'm talking just about people who want to live in this country or who want to, 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 to get a work permit. So, and on the other hand, they are struggling to clear up a backlog. The infrastructure of home affairs is outdated. There are not enough people working for home affairs. The, the, the treatment that you sometimes get, you know what is sad to me as a South African, is that when I speak to foreigners in this country, I'm talking about black immigrants. The first thing they say to me is that even before you land in South Africa, you are being schooled that you must be ready to bribe a home affairs official for you to get into the country. If you are not willing to bribe or to pay your way, that is except the, the, it's except the visa fees. To, if you're not prepared to pay to grease a few palms, whether you have the right documents or not, you will struggle to get your permit, right? It is heartbreaking for me to hear that.
So instead of trying to fix the issues at home affairs, issues of fraud, issues of corruption, a backlog, issues of slow, uh, slow computer systems, slow IT systems. This is what the minister proposed to change the laws. Excuse me. But now, look what is happening. South Africa risks losing business investment over, I beg your pardon. Why is this happening? I just want to give a background of what is currently taking place behind the scenes at home affairs. Job creation is limited. So foreign investments are saying that we are considering to leave, to move our money out of this country due to a skills shortage. Why is this affecting? For why is home affairs affecting foreign investors? Because you need to deal with a visa system that appears to be causing self-inflicted damage in the economy and chaos. Skilled workers, we don't have enough people. Skilled workers in engineering, science, information technology and management level personnel. That's one problem. There's another problem. In South Africa, it takes up to 48 weeks to process a critical skills work workers permit. In Kenya, it takes a maximum of 12 weeks. In Nigeria, it is just eight weeks. In South Africa, a minimum of 48 weeks. Doesn't end there. The European U Union is South Africa's second biggest trading partner after China. They account for 51% of all foreign direct investment. They employ 350,000 people and over 100,000 European countries are currently operating in South Africa. And they are tired of having to deal with home affairs. Here's a kicker. In South Africa currently, there is no complete data of how many skilled workers this country needs. They don't know whether we actually have a shortage because there is no database. And this comes from BUSA, Business Unity South Africa, the largest business group in South Africa. I will leave it there. That is the situation in South Africa. We need jobs. We need opportunities. There's a skills shortage according to the numbers of certain sectors. South Africa has a skills shortage. So this is my take. For years, we've heard about the skills shortage. Just as a side note, I am also qualified as an artisan. The same time that it was said that there's a huge shortage of electricians in this country, which I am one, there's a huge shortage of electricians. There were countless electricians looking for jobs, qualified, competent, and yeah, I'm not just talking about white, white and black electricians were looking for jobs but at the same time the country was saying oh we don't have enough electricians we don't have enough skills you know why there is no complete database of skilled workers in south africa and that you can lay before the door of the department of labor because in this mess the chaos of the visas they are three role players Two that I want to focus on, Department of Labor and Department of Home Affairs. They work in conjunction, but the backlog is with Home Affairs. 74,000 people 
74,000. I want you to, to, to picture that number. That is a small town, 74,000 people. When you look at the school on average, a school can take a thousand students. Let's say a high school, secondary school can take a thousand students. So at the moment, 70 high schools can be filled with the people who are waiting for their visas to be processed. Why is this a problem? Remember, because there's no proper database in South Africa of skilled workers. They don't know where to find them. So now if you are a company, you come from Europe, you come from America, you come from United Kingdom, you come from Russia or China or wherever, and you have skilled personnel in your own country, and you want to come here because the, the conditions are favorable, it's favorable for you, and you come with your skilled people. So each person needs a visa. The business needs a visa to, to operate in this country and you have to work through home affairs so that is where the problem starts to get a skills for you to come from another country to come from South Africa to fill a critical skills position you need a police clearance one of the things in your own home country right you need um, a medical certificate. Now, some reports say it has been removed. Others say it's still there. So you need a medical certificate to prove that you are healthy and you don't have tuberculosis. You also need your documents, your qualifications. It must be verified by the South African Quality um, Association or Quality, but SAKWA. It's called SAKWA for education. Like they monitor and they verify all the qualifications in South Africa. So you now need, you have to come to SAKWA with all your qualifications so they can verify it. And to do that, it must also be translated. Because if you are from Germany or Sweden or you are from France, for instance, then they want it in English, which is the official language. And to do that, you need to get a sworn translator. Do you know how much a sworn translator costs? And that process alone, it takes up to six months just to verify your documents. That's one of the processes. On top of that, on top of that, if you come here with your spouse, your spouse is not allowed to work. If you come to South Africa on a critical skills visa, which means if at home you used to have two incomes, it gets slashed to one income because no one can explain why you are not allowed to work if you are the spouse of a critical skills visa holder. Then the rejection rate. When you apply, there's a 52% chance that you will be rejected. So just, just figure, just, I want you to just sit and think about this. You come here as a family because that is what people do. You relocate as a family. All four, say it's the couple with their two children. Now you, the couple with their two children, sorry, you apply for your visas. The chances are two out of you won't be approved. How does that affect your family life? Last year, there was one of the top lecturers or someone in a top management position at the University of Stellenbosch who said he's going back home because he has been struggling for a year to get his visa and his family's visa approved so they can come and live with him in South Africa back to home affairs. Don't think it's just the critical skills um, visa permits that's a problem, workers permits that's a problem. Also, short-term visitors, if you just want to come and visit or you can want to come for a holiday, it can be delayed. So now what happens is that people, international organizations who might who want to have a conference, they do not want to come here because of the backlog at home affairs. So we lose out revenue that we need. Because of the critical skills 
visa um, backlog. Companies are now saying, we don't want to be here anymore. It's too much of a problem. It's too much of a slip and it's affecting our bottom line, which you can understand if you have someone in your country who can fill a critical position in your business, you would want to bring them here. South Africa says, no, you have to go through 22 processes, 22 that you have to pay for. On top of that, first, you have to advertise in the whole of South Africa to find someone in South Africa who can fill that skill. And only then, if you can prove, I don't know what measurements they do, they use, if you can prove as a business that there's no one in South Africa with that skill, only then can you start the process of applying for a worker's visa. Tell me if this makes sense. And then also I want to bring in the unions because the unions, you are just as useless as the political parties. I'm sorry for those unions who are actually doing their job. You can either take the, the shoe, put the shoe on or not. But the unions are blocking many opportunities because they are the ones who say, we, we don't, we, before we go somewhere else, you must first find a South African. So why don't you change your thinking? Why don't you make it easier to bring the critical skill to South Africa with the requirement that once it's here, then you train another South African? For the same with for, with the same skills, skills development, skills transfer. That's all we need. We don't need this blockage. Mr. Aaron Matswaledi is now focusing on overruling the immigration laws of this country. Instead of overruling his IT systems, of overruling his workforce, of improving the way home affairs do things. And I just want to ask for those people who work at home affairs who see those cues every day, some of them have stinking attitudes. You, you, you treat us like dirt. Don't think this is just unique to South Africa, to, to, to foreigners, even us as South Africans. We have to deal with these people. But for every person at home affairs who's doing a wonderful job, we say thank you. But if you take it from the top, we have a minister, he ruined Department of Health. And now he's coming to home face, he's causing chaos, he's causing a backlog, he doesn't take accountability, he's blaming everyone, he's denying the problems. While people's lives are affected, the economy is in ruins, and because of his department, the, the shambles are continuing. And it starts with one. It just takes one person to start taking his role and take his place instead of focusing on unnecessary things. You know, Mr. Motswaledi, if you want to fix the prob problem of illegal immigrants, deal with corruption in your department, deal with fraud in your department, deal with the weak border controls, deal with things that you can change right now, upgrade your IT systems, get employ more people, Train more people so that they don't have to suffer with the backlog. They don't, your workers don't have to deal with the, with the frustrations and the desperations of South Africans. Because right now, you are causing chaos for the economy. You are causing chaos in families' lives. You are causing chaos in this country. And you are focusing on wanting to change laws. How can you change laws if the system is not working? I just want to end off. Yeah? Next year is elections. It's elections next year. So we now have an opportunity to like, and I see now that's the narrative, to change the people at the top. Well, here's food for thought. Yeah? This inco these incompetent people who keep on being moved from department to department, who cause chaos after chaos, under Malusi Kigaba, home affairs caused a mess. Tourism for it, it fell apart because of that man's decision. Now we have another stooge, Aaron Matswaledi, a medical doctor dealing with home affairs, workers' visas, dealing with tourist visas. Oh, I mean, don't, is it so hard?
hard for the ANC to find competent people. You know, I think you guys, you are just here to destroy the country, to destroy the economy, and you're coming through a back door. You want to blame apartheid. You want to blame colonialism. You want to blame white people. You want to blame everyone else except yourself. This current mess, it's you. It's all on you. And we need to talk about it. So next year is an election. And I, I, I see people are saying, no, 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 vote. It's like these people, these dumb asses keep on voting for the ANC. You know why these dumb asses keep on voting for the ANC? Because so far as much as the corrupt, incompetent, dishonest, lying ANC has, as for 30 years, they've been adding to the ruins of this country. They managed to get away with it because for 30 years, for 30 years, opposition parties couldn't convince voters to vote for them in their numbers. Therein lies the problem. You, as much as the ANC had 30 years to prove themselves, just so the opposition and parties had the same. There's a lack of leadership. There's a lack of will. There is a lack of understanding what we really need and what we really want. And we must stop looking at this as a black and white issue. Yes, I will say, it. I know yesterday I was very angry, very angry. But we must stop when it's a black person, we want to make excuses. When it's a white person, we say we need a, we need a white person to lead. No, we don't. We just need a competent person. So I'm asking you, Mr. Ramaphosa, is it so hard for you to find an energetic, competent, skilled, abled person to run the Department of Home Affairs? Your country is falling apart. Two threats we have to this economy, load shedding and home affairs. So what are you going to do about it? I thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And... Comment. Let me know what you think.